<clears throat> hey, well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Dave coming to you from the paddock here in Southern Maryland. It's uh, Monday afternoon. Um, here in Maryland, we got a nice, bright, sunny day, but the wind has continued. We got sustained 20 miles an hour. So um, it's really not <clears throat> yet another good day to not be outside. So we may not, <laughs> may not do a fireside chat again tonight. It'll be a couple days in a row because of the weather, but it's just not fun. Hey, I'm smoking my uh, black meerschaum, and in it, one of the ones that Dave from St. Dave Pipes gave me. So uh, Boswell's Night Slice. This is like my third bowl, and I gotta say it smokes really nice. It's um, it's a simpler blend. I mean, the the description says it's got three in it that you know a touch of Cavendish, but um, it it smokes a lot like <clears throat> a codger blend, in, at least in my mouth. Anyway, it's it's enjoyable as long as I take it slow. This pipe heats up; it's a little bit smaller, so it heats up more than my other meerschaums, but. You know, if I sip it, it's great. Um, so, Dave, thanks a lot, man. Again, uh, Boswell's Night Slice. Um, I had never heard of it. I'd never tasted it before, but it's I consider it a kind of a gentle blend. It's like I said, I'm kind of on my third continuous bowl, and I my mouth likes it. So, Dave, thank you very much, buddy. And again, today's back just back to coffee, black coffee. Um, it it goes really well. I think you know I, I told you before I even did a video on it but I'll do another one at some point I, I brew cowboy coffee so it's just a coffee pot water and grounds that's it and um, it works really well it, it doesn't make any sense um, you think the grounds would just be in your cup all the time and they're not you, when you're done brewing it you just bring it to a boil let it boil for five minutes and then pour a little bit of cold water on it. it. draws all the grounds to the bottom of the pot. It's really good. It boils all the acid, all the crap, all the junk out of pretty, what's available or what is put into most coffees. Um, even the high-end premium brands have a lot of stuff that boils out. While you, if, you, if you're bored like I am, you can watch it boil. And um, for the first couple of minutes, you see it just froth and boil all this stuff out of your coffee. And it leaves a super smooth... Now, a lot of people have trouble with acid in coffee, and um, I'm telling you, Cowboy Coffee has none, so I really like it. Uh-oh, it's Greg's favorite sound. The Night Slice, I kind of rub it out, tear it up a little bit, but um, it goes nice and light into the pipe. It lights well, and it stays pretty well lit. Unless you're talking and the camera's rolling, and then nothing stays lit when the camera's rolling. Mm, that's nice. Thank you, Greg. That's a fine combination. Give you a keychain update 24 of 25 are out the door. I got one left in the bag. Um, Linda, the woman who makes them, has finished the tw next 25 and has well, that order has been paid for, so she's gonna probably gonna ship it today. So we'll have another 25 in the door here any day now. So if you want one, again, don't be shy, ask for the keychain, man. And the more team freedom we can get out there, the better. So understand that there's still a contingent out there that thinks that this new guy has gone and hijacked the community. I think that's pretty funny. I'm going to have to change my name. Got to come up with a good nickname for the channel. The other thing I haven't done in a while is put out a call for mailing addresses, cell phones, things like that. I keep a database. Um, I officially have 80 people in, in my database you know, in case YouTube goes nuts and shuts us down. At least 
I can at least reach out to almost 100 people and say, hey, this is where we are now. So if you feel like it, send it to me. I get it. It can be touchy. But if you if you feel like it, send me your mailing address. Send me your cell phone. I'll put it in the database, and um, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep uh, we'll just keep a nice list of those of us who participate, at least in this corner of the YTPC. I know the larger the larger organization may not support what I'm trying to do. So anyway, I, I don't really care. But I just I haven't put out a call for a while. So I put out that call for more keychains. We got to come up with a better name than that. But but. Um, if you want one, let me know. And if you want to send me your address so I can get you in the database in case something goes wrong on YouTube, please do that. So, guys, I thought we'd be lighter today. The last two, three weeks have been pretty heavy on the channel. You know, with the turnaround series and the investment series, uh, there's just been a been a lot of dense, heavy, long sub videos. So I don't want to do that today. But a couple of you said, "Hey, why don't, why don't you read to us again?" So I'm going to read to you from this book. So. I'm going to read to you from the March 9th entry. Um, this entry affected me. Again, this is probably my... I've probably been in the book nine years. So I've been through it six, seven times. You can see this is highlighted and commented and all that. But So this one affects me, and I think you see it on my channel. You, I think you see it in how I conduct myself in front of you. But let me just read it. March 9th. The more authentic you become, the more genuine in your expression, particularly regarding personal experiences and even self-doubts. The more people can relate to your expression and the safer it makes them feel to express themselves. That expression in turn feeds back on the other person's spirit and genuine creative empathy takes place producing new insights and learnings and a sense of excitement and adventure that keeps the process going. So that's what I've always tried to do. Now, let me stop that. For the last 10 years, I've really tried to make that part of who I am, that I'd be as absolutely genuine as I can. And when I screw up, I say it. And when, um, when I tell stories, some of them are of my screw-ups. And, you know, this whole thing about trying to be real and be honest and create and expand the topics and the subjects and the way we talk to each other. That's all part of this day, this um, this reading. Um, and and I, I sense it's working with us. Right? The more genuine I am, the more genuine you guys seem to get. You know, the more crazy stories I tell you, the more stories that come into the community. So I think you see it working. And um, I just want to say that I, I, I haven't hit a... A core pillar reading in a while, and that one was, you know, dead center for me. That's one of my pillars for this channel: is be as real as possible and uh, as honest as possible, and hopefully it creates comfort on that side of the camera, so that you guys can be uh, more real and honest and and uh, open as po as as well. Um, I see it not only in the videos that come back to us, but I see it in the comments that get written into my videos, and I see it when you guys text and email me. You're awfully open and honest, and I hope that's because of what you see on the channel. So that was a big one. Um, so every now and then uh, I, I need to, it was a good suggestion. A couple of you said, hey, get back in the books, and um, there's a good example. So thanks for the idea. Hey, guys, I think we'll wrap this up with a question that I was asked online, but I want to answer it in a bit. I answered it directly, so if you ask this question, the answer's already there. But I had a question come in and said, "Did uh, was the FBI different back when I was supporting it than it is today? So I spent 25 years, really uh, 95 to, to when I sold, really, uh, 2019. So serving inside the Bureau... <clears throat> And for a lot of those years at the highest levels. <clears throat> so I went there. I got to the Bureau basically April 1st, 1995. And at the time, Louis Free or Doc, uh, Director Free was was the director. And <clears throat> he's the first director I got close to. And then when his term was up, there are 10-year appointments. They're supposed to be non-political. That's why it's 10 years, so it spans elections. Um and then uh, Robert or, or Robert Mueller came in, or Bob. You know, I got very close to Bob, and 
I would say in those days, the FBI was a crime-focused agency. I mean, I personally witnessed the prioritization of asset allocation. That was one of the things that they had me work on. And they wanted to know nationally and worldwide, <clears throat> where were their agents deployed and what were they doing and what were they working on? And were, were they working on the priorities of the Bureau? And the Bureau's priorities at that time was you know, anti-terrorism, um, counter-terrorism, and uh, big white-collar crime rings. And I happen to agree those were the areas I think they still would be today, if, I, if you ask me today. But I felt under those directors, they, um, they largely, that agency stayed a crime-focused, prioritization-focused um, agency. And in fact, Bob Mueller was doing such a good job. He finished his 10 years and uh, Obama asked him to stay on. I think he actually served 12 years. That's two years longer, I think, than any other director except Hoover. And that's just a whole different story. But, um, but then James Comey got appointed and everything changed at that point um he was very politically involved and i think he was the one who began the real shift of how we prioritize fbi assets from crime to politics and i think that that holds through to today's bureau i think you know, I am not proud of the Bureau today. I'm not proud. I'm glad I'm not an agent. I'm glad I wasn't an agent at this point. And, um, you know, I'm not proud as an American where how that agency focuses its assets and its attention. Um, I think it's easily correctable. I mean, you put the right director in and you leave him alone and you, you don't you don't make him change his priorities based on politics. I think the agency would shift back very quickly. Because the average person is a special agent, right? We call them FBI agents, but officially they're called special agents. And the man and woman who choose to go into that, it's a lifestyle. Uh, many have left. Uh, you know, when the shift started happening, they rolled. But the, but the average man or woman who chooses to live that lifestyle, these are good people. You know, they're being directed poorly today. And I think the ones that are being allowed in now may have different motivations. But... I think it's very correctable. But I wanted to answer the question directly, and I thought it was an interesting question and an interesting answer to a larger audience. I believe until Comey was appointed, the FBI was a very good agency. Did they screw up? I'm sure, absolutely. Is every agent a good agent? No. You know, but by and large, I'm proud of that organization until James Comey got appointed. So I just want to answer that question. Now, we're going to wrap it up today. That's the end of the video. and. Um, I'm going to say see you later. I hope to get a fireside chat done today because I've got some stories racked up for you. Um, but that's it for this one. We will talk to you again either at fireside tonight or tomorrow on Tuesday. Bye, you guys.